हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द ई लर्निंग प्रोग्राम ऑफ के टीच एम कॉलेज नासिक आई एम डॉक्टर एम के देवरे फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स के टीच एम कॉलेज नासिक डियर स्टूडेंट इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सी अबाउट द कंसेप्ट ऑफ रेसिप्रोकल डाटाइस नाउ इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द कंसेप्ट ऑफ रेसिप्रोकल डाटाइस यूज ऑफ द रेसिप्रोकल डाटाइस expression of the reciprocal lattice and the relation between the direct lattice and the reciprocal lattice students in the first lecture we have seen about the lattice points and the bases and also the formation of the crystal structure we have seen that the crystal structure is formed by associating with every lattice point by a unit assembly of atoms or the molecules in identical position now in this figure see here this is the two dimensional area of the lattice point now if we consider the every lattice point x as an atom now then number of the atoms are arranged in a different planes and they are parallel with each other so the every point get surrounded with identical atoms or the every atom is get surrounded with the identical atoms and its arrangement is spheroidal so these are the number of the atoms which are in one plane and that is known as the atomic plane so in case of that the every type of the crystalline material there are the huge number of the set of parallel planes and their orientations are different in different directions so such a type of the arrangement is also known as the real lattice or the direct lattice so with the help of real lattice or the direct lattice we get only the information of the crystalline structure but or for to describe the any crystalline structure we need the real lattice or the direct lattice but to get the more information or the detailed informations about the any type of the crystal such as the atomic arrangement in that crystal the interplanar distance between the two planes the lattice constants etc for that we need to study the x-ray diffraction of the any type of the crystals now the x-ray diffraction from the any crystalline material we will study in details about the bracks x-ray diffraction in next chapter now here consider here this is the these are the all crystalline planes which are parallel with each other and if the x ray get incident on these atomic planes now then the rays will be get diffracted now then bracks observed that from this x ray diffraction he plotted the graph of the intensity versus theta and this x ray diffractogram gives the information about the orientation of the plane and also the interplanar distance between the planes from this x-ray diffractogram we can also determine the lattice constants but in case of that the x-ray diffraction diffract uh, x bracks x-ray diffraction there is no direct relation between the bracks peaks and the different planes and in case of the bracks x bracks x-ray diffraction it is difficult to visualize the set of the parallel planes in the crystal lattice because the orientation of the planes are in different directions 
so it is difficult to visualize such a set of the parallel planes in direct light eyes and such a difficulty solved by the german physicist pp ewald in 1920 and he has given the concept of reciprocal light eyes which is used to visualize the set of parallel planes in a crystal light eyes now that means the reciprocal light eyes gives the representation of the set of parallel planes so in this way by using the evolved construction and the concept of the reciprocal light eyes it gives the representation of a set, set of the parallel planes therefore the concept of the light the reciprocal lattice plays a very fundamental role in the study of the x-ray diffraction pattern produced by the crystal and so in case of nowadays to study the different properties of the materials we need to study the crystalline properties also and for that we need to do the x-ray diffraction of such a type of a different types of the crystalline materials and with the help of the reciprocal lattice we can determine all the inform we can obtain all the information related with the crystal structures of the difference material so the reciprocal lattice having the very important role in x-ray diffraction study now see here this is the two dimensional lattice and here by using the translations by using the primitive translation vector we can obtain the square array now this picture shows that now this is in case of that the crystal lattice so if we take the reciprocal of this real lattice now then the picture will be like this way. now these are the photographs of the real lattice and the reciprocal lattice now then see here in case of that the real lattice we are using the translation vector and that gives the vector r is equal to n1 vector a1 plus n2 vector a2 plus n3 vector a3 but now in case of the reciprocal lattice we are getting the reciprocal lattice vector is equal to be the h1 b1 plus h2 b2 plus l b3 so here the reciprocal lattice get expressed in terms of the hkl now then see here how we can represent the reciprocal lattice in case of that the three dimensional array now consider here this is the cube now then if we consider here the edge of the cube is equal to with the phi unit now then if we consider here now these are the different planes suppose here now this is the x axis here this is the y axis here this is the z axis therefore now this plane having the coordinates 0 0 1 okay now this plane having the Uh, miller indices you can say that the miller indices 0 1 0 now this plane having the miller indices 0 0 1 now then if we consider the any arbitrary origin 
Now consider here the O dash is the any arbitrary origin, and from this origin, if we draw the normal to this plane here, okay. Now then see here, now this is the plane having the Miller indices zero one zero. Okay. Now then. and this is the plane parallel to this these two planes are parallel with each other okay now then if we consider here the distance between these two planes equal to be the pi unit now then draw the normal from this arbitrary origin and terminate at the point where the distance will be one half of the edge of this or one half of the distance between these two planes suppose if we consider here the distance between these two planes equal to be the phi unit now then the reciprocal of this will be equal to that is 1 by phi is equal to be the 0.2 unit therefore If when you will draw the normal from this arbitrary origin, and when it is passing through this plane, then terminate it at the point where you will get the reciprocal of the distance between these two planes, and that point is known as the reciprocal point. Now, then, in this case here. If we consider these two planes are parallel with each other, now then the same thing here. If we consider the upper plane and the lower planes are parallel with each other, again if we draw the normal from this arbitrary point and which is passing through this zero zero one plane, now then terminate at the point which is at a distance of the reciprocal of the distance between these two uh, distance between these two planes. And that is as an reciprocal that I suppose. Now, in this way, in case of that, the any type of that crystal. Now, then, what will happen here? If we consider these number of the planes. Now, then, if we consider the another number of the planes. Now, then, the same thing you will get the different reciprocal lattice points, and these are reciprocal lattice point. he presents the set of these two parallel planes now in this way now these are now the the corners of this cube are acts as a direct lattice but now this point acts as a reciprocal lattice so now in this case here we can draw the number of reciprocal lattices in any type of the crystals and that is a reciprocal lattice represent the set of parallel planes now then we are going to see about the construction of the reciprocal lattice now then see here now in case of that this is the two dimensional square uh, two dimensional lattice array and in this case here if we consider here a and b are the fundamental translations vectors now then if there is the formation of the square array so now in this figure we can see here now then how to construct a reciprocal lattice in case of the any type of that the crystalline material or any type of the two dimensional array or the three dimensional array now then see here in this case here suppose if we consider here now this is the x axis y axis and the z axis and if we consider the any arbitrary origin now if we consider here this is one of the plane that uh, known as the hkl plane and this h hkl plane which is at a distance dhkl from the origin o okay now see here now then in this case here the first point is to select the any arbitrary point in the direct lattice as a origin suppose here now if you consider the point o is the origin in the direct lattice now from this common 
origin draw the normal to each and every set of the parallel planes in the direct line axis now then if we consider the origin is also in one of that the plane now then at a suitable at a some distance if we consider this is one of the plane it is at a distance dhkl having the miller indices hkl now then draw the normal from this ori from the arbitrary origin o now then fix the length of each normal equal to the reciprocal of the interplanar spacing of that set of the parallel planes hkl that means now you have to terminate this normal at the point where you will get the distance reciprocal of the distance between the two planes here and that point is known as the reciprocal lagrange so we get here the sigma hk uh, sigma hkl is equal to be the 1 divided by the dhkl where this is sigma is known as the reciprocal lattice spectrum so here and this dhkl is nothing but the distance between the two planes here now then the place the point at the end of the normal so here this point where the normal get terminated and that is known as the reciprocal lattice point so it is very important how to construct the reciprocal lattice now in case of the any uh, type of that the crystal any type of reciprocal lattice in case of that the any type of the direct lattice so here now this is the direct lattice now then here after constructing the reciprocal lattice in this direct lattice we get the different points other than the direct lattice points now then see here now we are going to obtain the expression for the reciprocal lattice vectors now consider here a plane representing by the line one now see here this is the uh two dimensional square lattice and in this two dimensional square lattice if we draw the any one plane here now then this line acts as a plane uh say as the line one now then by the property now then in this diagram here if we consider this is the by using that the fundamental uh, vector c a and fundamental vector c a and b there is the formation of the square array now then if we draw the normal from point o on this line 1 and say as uh, it will be terminated at the point b on this line 1 therefore the coordinate of the intercept of the x axis uh, intercepts of the x and y axis are the a by k and the b by h the distance between these two planes you can say that it is normal from the point o to the b equal to b say as the d now then from the geometry of this figure we can observe the two triangles here the aoc and the aob now then by the property of the similarity similarity of the triangles aoc and the aob now we can write here that the ratio of these two sides here this uh, the ob divided by the oa is equal to the oc divided by the ac now then see here if we uh, by taking the intersect uh, corresponding to the x and y axis and by substituting this value we get this relation here now then by uh, by solving this here you will get the 1 upon d it is equal to be the under root h square k square plus k square into the b square divided by the ab and this is equal to the sigma therefore here that this sigma is nothing but or uh, it gives the magnitude of the reciprocal lattice vectors now then see here now in the in this case here the same thing is here that that means here this is the previous figure here if we take now then uh, in case of that 
how you can write or how you can show the sigma in this figure. Now then if we take the inverted image of this now then you will look like this here. So here we get the sigma is equal to the 1 upon d. Now then after taking the inversion of this figure the figure will be like this here. So here you will get the intercept along the x and the y axis are the k by a and the h by b. Therefore we get the expression for the reciprocal lattice is equal to be 1 divided by dhk. Now thus we can define the reciprocal lattice vector. The reciprocal space lattice is a set of the geometry points constructed in such a way that the direction of a vector from the one point to the another coincide with the direction of the normal to the real space and the separation of those points is equal to the reciprocal of the real interplanar distance. That means in shortly you have to remember that the reciprocal, the magnitude of the reciprocal lattice vector is nothing but the uh, is, is nothing but the reciprocal of the interplanar distance. So remember this. Now then now see here now in case of that suppose if we consider here this is the direct lattice now then if we plot the if we draw the recipro uh, reciprocal lattice of this direct lattice now then it will be look like this the same thing is here in case of that this is the uh, lattice points in the direct lattice now then you can see the reciprocal lattice of the direct lattice it will be like this. So remember here how we can draw the reciprocal lattice in case of the any type of the direct lattice in case of the any crystalline structure. Now then we are going to obtain the relation between the reciprocal lattice and the relation uh, reciprocal lattice and the direct lattice. Now again we can define the reciprocal lattice. The reciprocal lattice is defined as the vector having the magnitude equal to the reciprocal of the interplanar spacing and the direction coinciding normal to the HK plane. That means we can say that the direction of the reciprocal lattice vector is along the direction of the normal. So we can write here the magnitude of the sigma HKL is equal to the 1 upon the interplanar distance that is the DHKL. Now then, for obtaining that the relations, you have to be considered the primitive unit cell of the crystal having the crystallographic axis we say as the A, B and the C along the X, Y and the Z axis. Now then, then the volume of that the primitive unit cell is nothing but the area multiplied by the height. Now then we can write here the V is equal to be the area of the base having the side. So here we can obtain the area of the base. Now this area of the base having the side B and the C multiplied by that height the D10. So if we consider here this first the area of this primitive unit cell and if we draw the normal to the plane 100 zero zero, so its interplanar distance we can say that the T100. Zero zero. Therefore we can write here 1 upon D100 zero zero is equal to be that area divided by the volume. If we draw the unit vector n in the direction of the normal to the plane. Now then this equation 1 becomes here in terms of that the unit vector. We can write the sigma vector sigma hkl is equal to the 1 divided by the dhkl into the unit vector. Now then we can obtain the area of the base of the primitive unit cell and the base of the primitive unit cell is nothing but the cross product of the vector b and the c. Now then 
from that the equation two, we can substitute the value of the area there, and the equation two becomes here. The one upon b one zero zero is equal to the area uh, magnitude of the vector b cross c divided by the. Therefore, we can write here the sigma one zero zero is equal to one upon d one zero zero into the unit vector is equal to the vector b cross vector c divided by the vector. Volume uh, v into the unit vector. Now, but we know that now that we can write the unit vectors in terms of these fundamental uh, unit vectors. That is, it is nothing but the ratio of the vector v cross c divided by the magnitude of the vector v magnitude of the vector v cross c. Therefore, now if we substitute the value of the unit vector here. Now it becomes here the vector v cross c divided by the v into the vector v cross c divided by the magnitude of the vector v cross c. So we get here the sigma 100 is equal to vector v cross c divided by the vector. Therefore, the volume of the primitive unit cell and the volume of the primitive unit cell is equal to the v is equal to the vector a into the vector v cross Vector C. Therefore, the, the above equation number six become by substituting the value of the v volume here. So we get vector v cross vector C divided by the vector A into the vector v cross C. Now the volume of the primitive unit cell we already studied uh, in SYBSC. That is nothing but the scalar the scalar triple product. And similarly, now now in this case here, so we get here the vector which is normal to the plane one zero zero. It gives the vector v cross vector c divided by the vector a cross vector v cross vector c. Similarly, we can obtain the relation for the another vectors here, the uh, another vectors. Sigma one, uh, sigma zero one zero, and the sigma zero zero one. Now see here. Now in case of, now we are uh, first obtain, first draw the vector, draw the no, uh, normal to the plane one uh, to the plane zero one zero, and so we can write the same. Uh, similarly, we can write the expression for the vector sigma zero one zero is equal to. Vector C cross vector A divided by the vector A cross uh, vector uh, vector A dot vector B cross vector C. The same thing in case of that the sigma zero zero one plane. Now you have to draw the vector from this origin O normal to this plane here. Now this is the plane here. This is the zero zero one. So here you have The its expression becomes sigma zero zero one is equal to the vector a cross b divided by vector a dot in bracket vector b cross vector c. Now these vectors are considered as a reciprocal trans translations vectors. Now therefore we can represent now these vectors by Vector a, vector b, and the vector c. Therefore, the vector a is equal to b vector sigma one zero zero is equal to the vector b cross vector c divided by the vector a in bracket vector b cross vector c. Similarly, vector b is equal to b uh, vector sigma zero one zero is equal to vector c cross vector a divided by the vector a in bracket vector b cross vector c. Now, similarly, in case of that, we can write here the vector C is equal to the vector uh, sigma zero zero one is equal to the vector A cross vector B divided by the vector A dot in bracket vector B cross vector C. Now, then we can observe here that vector A is therefore here this is the A is nothing but that the vector uh, sigma one uh, vector. The vector, which is normal to the plane one zero 
zero. Therefore, the vector A is normal to the plane B to the ve vectors B and C. Therefore, we can take the scalar product of this and it is equal to zero. Now then, in case of that, the vector D is normal to, therefore here is normal to the vector C and vector A. That means vector C and the vector A, therefore we can take the scalar product and it is equal to the zero. So the vector B dot vector C is equal to the zero, vector B dot vector A is equal to the zero. Similarly, now see here, now in this case here, this is the vector C is normal to the vector A and the B. So its scalar product is equal to the 0 that is this vector c dot vector a is equal to the 0 and vector c dot vector b is equal to the 0 we get here. Now then <coughs> we can write here the scalar product of the vector a means reciprocal vector a and the direct uh, lattice vector a now then its scalar product it is equal to the 0. The same thing if we take the scalar product of the reciprocal lattice vector and the di direct lattice. Now then by substituting this value see here. Now we get this expression here. Now then uh, if we substitute this value so it becomes here the vector b dot vector c cross vector a divided by the vector a dot vector b cross vector c. But we know that the property of a scalar triple product, we can change the position of the vectors in a cyclic order. Therefore, this equation becomes that is vector b dot uh, the, uh, the, pro the scalar product of the reciprocal lattice vector and the direct lattice. In case of that, the vector b it is also equal to the one. The same thing now we can write in terms of that the reciprocal lattice vector C and the direct lattice vector C. Now, its scalar product is also equal to be the one here. Therefore, therefore, we observe that the vector A dot vector B. Now, A, now in this case here, these vectors are the orthogonal while the vector A dot vector A that is the scalar product of the reciprocal lattice vector and the direct lattice vectors now then it is equal to the one and this is the reciprocal part therefore with the help of the reciprocal lattice vectors a b and the c we can construct the we can construct the direct lattice we can we can construct the uh, lattice uh, we can construct 